Well, hello, my creative crafty pals. So, I thought I had more stuff than I had. <laughs> so, we're going to wing some of the decorations today, just so you get an idea. So, I went online, and I found some ideas, like this clover that I fussy cutted and printed. And then this paper, and then here's a smaller clover. <laughs> I tried to find some random items. Happy St. Patrick's Day, the mug of beer. And then we have a hat. And we have another Happy St. Patrick's Day. I just picked random. I have no idea what I'm gonna use in the book, <laughs> but I wanted to print off some ideas just to have just a few so I actually like dyeing papers and I have a big shot machine and for those who are new to my channel if you don't know what a big shot is it is a machine that I will show you I want to I'm gonna get this and give you a little bit of a demonstration I don't have it right next to me, so give me one second. It's right behind me. Put this up so I don't spill it. My pink water. And I do have a timer set because I don't want to go way past a really long video where you get tired of watching. If you can even spare an hour out of your day to watch my videos, that is very appreciated. So here is one of my big shots. I don't have any of my dies down here. As you can see, I had a heart die. And what you do with this machine, let me pick this up, is it comes with two trays. I got a really good deal on this. I happened to be in the right place at the right time when this was being sold. And it's really cute. It's mint green. It's got a cute design on it. Let me move this water before I spill it. And... It comes with a layer, and what this is, is you can cut through paper. Uh, each level that you open this up, because you get thick dies and you get thin dies, and you can cut leather, chipboard, all kinds of stuff, and it tells you what layer to put it on to be able to cut. So what you do is you get the dies, which is usually by Sizzix or other companies. They do have cheaper ones that you can get from AliExpress or wherever. They're very thin though. So those ones are more for paper. Your thicker dies that you get from Sizzix and Tim Holtz has some, they will cut through thicker things like fabric. So you gotta know what dies go with what materials and that's something I learned. So it comes with two of these. So what you do, is you put a piece of paper down like in between you'll lay this down your paper down and your die on top and then you put this over top of it and then once you put this over top you take your leather here your lever leather your lever and you do this and they do have auto ones if you don't have because sometimes it can be harder to push through when it's thicker but um, they do have electric ones that you can do this with too it's just I prefer this one and I have one upstairs and one downstairs that I can use and you can cut out shapes because you can buy hearts you can buy anything pretty much that goes into dies you just google and, and die cuts, if you search die cuts, those are made from dies. 
in these machines. So they're already pre-made for you and you could order them that way too. I like making them. So this is what I will be using upstairs when I go to cut out certain things. Like I have a card to, you know, your regular card. If I want to make an artist trading card, I actually have the card die to cut out this shape. So that way you know where the stuff is coming from. Um, you don't have to have a die machine. You can get stuff that you can trace and cut. You can cut out of your junk mail if you get anything like magazines with, with stuff in it to do with St. Patrick's Day or whatever you're working on. Um, sometimes I've even seen people trace with a, a pencil against their computer. They'll put their page up against the computer, just use it as like a stencil and then cut it out. So there's many different forms of what you can put in your journals. This is just a tip. This machine has definitely paid for itself many times over because it's cool. And I like my die cut machine, but some people don't have them and that's okay too. It's whatever your preference is. That's why I love to name my crafty styles because you can use what you want. So to get started because I didn't measure like any of the pockets I made. I actually have one of my green dyed papers that I actually dyed with food coloring. How I do mine, some people let theirs air dry. You can put plastic stuff on top of it, like doily looking runners that you have for your table and let it dry on your paper and you can make really cool designs. They call, Some are called eco dye where they put them outside and dye. How I do my papers is I have a um, electric skillet. It's the squared kind with the lid that you plug in. I fill it up with water from my coffee pot. I run just water through. If I'm making coffee dyed papers, you can put coffee in. But for the most part, I just run the water through hot, sterilize it, put it in the pan, and then I leave it sit until it cools a little bit. I don't want my water too hot or your paper will get, you know, it'll fall apart. And you don't want it too cold. I kind of leave it kind of lukewarmish when I do mine. This is just my preference. I put about 10 to 11 drops of green, just regular food coloring. And I take my papers, which this is printer paper. I buy right at Walmart. You can do card stock too from there, whatever your preference is, but I do paper. And I use a pair of gloves and I just run it through once, flip it over, do it again. And then I have two large cookie sheets that I have covered with aluminum foil and I just lay the pages on the cookie sheets. And I bake them on 350 for maybe like 10 minutes. You can do it less. It depends. Never catches on fire. You just don't want it touching, you know, the oven. You just lay them out on the cookie sheet and I bake mine. And the, and the colors turn out amazing. Um, here's some samples. And sometimes you got to get creative on the coloring though because food coloring only comes so many colors. This is my coffee dyed paper. It's got a hole in it. But I can use the rest of it. So even if they fall apart, because this is what happens when your water's too hot. Trial and error, people. It falls apart. That's why I don't do it that way anymore. Here's pink. I think the hardest color to make is red. If you want red, you'd have to do something like Rit dye. And that's a whole other way of dyeing paper to me. But I do mine this way and then sometimes I've got to be creative and walk through the grocery store and pick what I would think would make a certain color. Like I wanted orange one time and they don't have orange food coloring that I could find so I used crystal light. The only thing I don't like about the crystal light is you get a grit in your paper. So if you're okay with that then you would like it. This is some blue and there's yellow and pink. You can tea dye, you can coffee dye. There's always a dyeing pages. But this one's my preference. So when you seen the journal I showed before that I completed, this was done with coffee dyed papers. 
And what I did was I just set it over the words. I cut the pages to fit to cover the words of the book because I wanted a writing journal. So your first thought is, what kind of journal do you want? If you want it to be writing, like this one here, I could turn it into writing, or I could just use this paper for decoration too. It doesn't matter. But um, this one here is not really gonna be a writing for me. I've already decided that when I started making the book. So it really doesn't matter if the pages are covered or not. This is going to be, to me, more like just a St. Patrick's Day book and things that I find. It's going to be kind of like a glue book, or I can paint in it, whichever I decide to do. But it's going to be green-oriented, of course, because of St. Patrick's Day. But, like, if I wanted to decorate this, I could cut it and put it over that page. Or I could just use something like this to make like a decoration. But we're gonna decorate this, and I'm just gonna show you my way of decorating. But you can decorate your book if you're working on one any way you want to decorate. So, that is kind of like a talk for people who are inter interested in doing something like this. So what I'm gonna do with this page you probably could do this with some of the pockets before you put it in, but I like the journal fun part of it. So, we're gonna use the book. I'm gonna see if I can even pull this off. <sighs> Get my handy dandy. We're gonna use the bigger scissors. And I'm gonna see where this starts. See about right. Well, I don't want to cut it. We'll just do it like I did the page itself and see if this works. We're going to make a little indent. Make sure this is even. We're not going to totally fold this piece of paper. We're just going to do an indent right there and I'm going to cut this the same way I did the page. I'm going to take it from the edge. straight to where I folded it and I'm going to go on this side and do the same. Now notice both of these pages are different sizes because this one's going to be smaller but it really shouldn't matter because this page is going to go smaller on that page if you get my drift. So by cutting it like that It should almost fit just to give a decor. And if I want to make it smaller, I can. So I'm going to take this in. I'm going to go back to the corner just to give it a little bit more because I don't want it to cover everything. The words would be pretty. you know is an outline so that's going to give kind of like that kind of look I like that to where it totally doesn't cover and then we're going to glue this to decorate Of course, you can use whatever glue you choose, of course. And you don't got to be perfect. You can be a messy Marvin like me, because I like being a messy Marvin. So we're going to kind of make it even from top to bottom. And just stick it in there as a decoration. It's a little bit kind of like card making if you want to have it. You could even have done a double tuck right there, but I only want one tuck. 
And then I have some smaller pieces that I can use to stick in the pockets if I want to. Like that fits perfect. So you could even use this as a measuring tool. Let me see here what I have. This here could be used as a journaling card. And you can round the corners if you want to. You can leave them square if you want to. But since this slides in here, like really nice, I like that. Gonna make sure I get the corners glued down. Sometimes I don't do my corners and they wanna pucker up. Put it that there. And this here. And we'll just hold it down for a second. All about the glue drying. No matter what you make on here. And you can come back and still decorate. You can put something there. But they have a lot of cute little decorations. You can find this clip art online that you can run off. Um, I have Instinct, so it does save money to do that. But this kind of gives you an idea on how to decorate your pages. So right now I'm focused mainly on the pockets. What do I want to do with the pockets I put in? And then we'll come, I will come back, you know, and decorate the rest of the book. But for today, I'm gonna find something to stick in that corner because I love calling those peekaboo pockets. I think they're cute. I mean, we could do a clover. Sticking out of a pocket like a lucky clover. That would be cute. So, you can either take this side that's outlined, or you could even flip it over and not show the outline and just have your green clover. But I like the outline, so I'm going to keep it this way. So, I got me a green marker. You can use paint, just like a kid in our class. You can use paint or whatever you choose to use to put in your little pocket. You can even put googly eyes on this if you want to. Journals can be fun for sure. You can do what you want. That's what's nice about calling it my crafty styles because it is your crafty style. So anyways, while I'm coloring this, I wanted to tell you all, everybody in the group I either know offline in person, I have a babysitter that used to babysit me in this group <laughs> when I was a kid, 
I have people that I went to school with. I have people that I met on whatnot and people I've met on YouTube and people who I've met through other YouTubers or other whatnot people. So this is very much a melting pot of people that I have known and I have met. And I love it. And I hope you all feel welcome enough to share your style of creations. Please do not be shy. This is a group that does not have a lot of strict rules. The only rules that I have in this group is just people be respectful of others and try to get along, but share. Share the kind of crafts that you're in. I do believe we have an author even in this group. I had another author I just met lately. I don't know if she'll join the group. I also have a couple people who I just invited. They're not, I don't think they're in here yet, but I invited two people that create digitals. So that will be cool. And then we have Michelle Scott who works on the design team because I invited Tracy Fox and I invited Norella who is Calico Designs. And both of them are very creative. Um, I like Tracy Fox because she does a lot of vintage and a lot of pretty items. And there's a lot of old school stuff in her, her stuff like tickets and things. And I love Norella because she's all about color. She is a very bright digital. And I really respect both of the things that they do. Michelle Scott actually creates a lot of vintage journals. I actually have one of hers and I absolutely love it. She will do customs. She knew I loved horses, so she made me a beautiful journal that I have shown in a video before. Um, even though I create journals, I appreciate buying other people's journals too because I think it's fantastic to see other people's visions in what they create. Then we have Katina that's in here. And she is a whatnot seller and she is really into dolls and we and other items she does other things then i have arlene and arlene is another one that loves putting things together she's into the dolls too and she does a lot of really cool items um, i'm still learning about some of the other crafters and some people that probably have crafting potential that i don't know yet i never learned how to knit but i do know how to do some crochet um so if a person wants to, if you watch the video, you can put a comment in here explaining what your favorite types of crafts are. And a little bit about yourself so that people get to know, you know, something about you. You can put like some of your interests, how you met me if you remember and things like that. Just introduce yourself. You don't have to. It's up to you. It's just a choice. But I think it's cool to for people to kind of know what others are into that's in a group because I don't want us to be a group of strangers. But I, uh, I think Arlene is going to post a picture of some of the stuff that she's creating and I will show you right here and now two things that she had up in an auction that I bought and I think these are fantastic this would be the coolest bride and groom at the top of a cake for somebody who is maybe a mechanic or into anything to do with something that you create whether it's a car or a circuit board or I don't know. I just think these two are super cute. And she made these and I just love them. And she did it out of junk scrap. So that's what I'm saying. Junk can come out to be one of the most beautiful creations. I love how she did that. <laughs> and how she used a jewel. This is so cute. So yes, Arlene, I'm bragging you up. <laughs> So you meet all kinds of crafters. That's what I'm saying. It's like there's no wrong way to craft. I got this at an auction. This was, I don't, I forget who the creator was. Oh, Sharon Lombard was the creator of this. She's a YouTuber. 
This is called felting. Is that like that the cutest thing you've ever seen? Oh my God, I love his eyeballs. And he sits right beside me and it's like, that was from a Defy auction. And if you don't know what Defy is, it is a nonprofit organization that raises money for people with handicaps and disabilities and they send shipping free a load of whatever they're into. When you go to the site, it's a, you have to be a certain income level. You sign up, you know, show like a proof of income and it's all done under Carehart and her channel is C-A-R-E-H-A-R-T on YouTube. It is a wonderful crafting community where crafters go and you can even see when you're in the, you know, they do fundraisers by auctions for you to be able to help support people that get crafts that uplift them that can't afford the extra stuff. I love it. I think it's amazing. It's got a lot of positive feedback from the people. But when you go to the website, you sign up for whatever you're into. It could be painting, canvas, it could be junk journal, it could be anything. And they send whatever you're into a supply. You pay no shipping and it's all free. I think it's an amazing set of women and it's really cool to watch one of their auctions because you also see ideas of what everybody creates. Not only for the fundraising part, but just how they craft and things that they donate that's crafted to put in the auction to raise money for people. And it's just their talent. There's so many people into so many different things on there that I, I love watching the auction. Even if I can't purchase, I will go to the auction sometimes, even when I don't have money, just to see what's out there. Because you can get inspired. And there are a lot of great crafters that donate to that program. So. Between that and the people with talent that comes into the group. It's, it's amazing. And I don't have a lot of strict rules. Because I feel like. Some do. I don't. You can put when you're having a sale. You can put anything you want as far as like crafting. Like I said, just drama free, crafting fun. It's pretty much all my rules are. I think my rules are pretty simple. <laughs> because sometimes, yes, they call them trolls. I call them just rude people. They enter facebook groups and you do got to be careful because sometimes facebook groups do do swaps and there's been people known to join into the swaps and get something and then don't give back and that's not good either so you know you're always going to have good and bad no matter what you do we just kind of weed that out but this group i want it to be laid back and i just want people to have fun and enjoy their craft and share what their craft is with others. So that's going to go to my peekaboo pocket. And in your books, you can use anything. You can use lace. You can use paper. You can use cardstock. Um, my personal preference, I like things that are flat. Because to me, when it's flat, it just it fits easier into the pockets. If you're sliding stuff in and out, for example, then you don't have to worry about stuff catching. So then we have this three-tiered page. And I don't think I have anything right now to go into this that I want to put into it. I'm going to have to make some stuff. Some extra, extra stuff. But... Me. Today we can go with mm, let me cut this out. I'm gonna fussy cut. I call it cussy cutting. You can either cut up against something or you can cut around it and kind of give it 
a look that it was meant to be that way. So we're gonna just cut around to see how it looks first. Cause I do both. I just need to make this smaller. Um, there's other crafters in here, I'm sure. Lori. That's in here. Lori Taylor. She is a friend of mine since I was a junior in high school. She is very talented. She can do shorthand. She can play the piano. She can draw like nobody else I know. She is so amazing with all her talents. And I hope she knows how much she's appreciated as a friend of mine. We've been friends for a really long time. And some of her drawings, Lori, could be posted into the group so people can see your talent. Not putting you on the spot or anything. <laughs> so we can take this and decorate this pocket. I'm going to use my other glue. I don't know where all my glue sticks are. I have glue sticks around here somewhere. I just don't know where they're at. Because I was going to try some. Just to play around with some glue sticks for a change. Come on. You can see there was a glue stick tuck here, but I don't know what I did with it. I'm always putting stuff somewhere. You just never know. But I, I do enjoy to chat and craft. Some people like music. Some people like silence. I'm a chatty crafter. That's just me. But I am going to use my die cut machine probably to make some tags to go in this because I've got different shapes. I've got ones that actually create the tags with the holes in them and I've got ones that's got like fancy roundy things. But like I said, it doesn't have to be like that. You can even go into the Dollar Tree and, you know, find stuff to create after like when they have sales after St. Patrick's Day. This was actually made from a card. I just took and these are cards that are, people always seem to have so many left over. This was celebrating 50th. You can put a picture in there to cover that and have a design or you can take layer it with pages you have laying around your house like old magazines and newspapers and kind of do something like that and then use it as something that you tuck into a pocket made with a card you have cards where you don't have all 50 you know you don't have 50 anymore or 52 or whatever you can back this you know because I don't know I I when we were kids growing up and we would lose pieces of our decks we would take other decks that didn't have the call the cards and put pull it in so that we had two different you know covers but we made a deck again but you could do this those for crafts if you have stuff that you have left over you can back this with this color paper or coffee dyed paper and you can turn this into a journaling card where a person can journal on the back of them as like kind of like a hidden secret in your journal. So that's tips for things. If you don't have a printer or stuff like that, you can make it. The only paper that I never see, and I never asked a, a question, so if you guys, would, any of you would know the answer to this, in the journaling community or scrapbooking, it doesn't matter, why don't 
people ever use construction paper. I never see people use construction papers. Is it because it's so soft and it rips? I don't know. I, I, have, I have to get an answer to that question. I don't know if any of you would know that answer, but if you do, please let me know. So there's a decoration for that page. And then we have the side. Now I don't have what I want to put in here. They're not done. And I am going to use my die cut machine to make a tag, but you don't need a die cut machine. You can cut, I don't have green down here, but you could trace a tag like off of this and then you just snip the edges and then cut a hole with a hole puncher or a crop dial and you can make a tag just out of a regular card. I just have some that's pre-made and I forgot to bring them downstairs. Out of upcycled cardboard. You know, your frozen boxes that your pizza and stuff comes in or what if you eat a frozen meal, those are perfect to make tags out of too. Here's another pocket. And this will be a good example. Let's try to make one out of this. So, we want it a little skinnier because we don't want it too tight to rip the sides open. So I'm gonna take this. If you have a paper trimmer, you can use that too. This just will give you an idea what I'm talking about. Not the straightest cutter in the world. But that fits in about right there. Now if you want your tag to be shorter, you pick which end you want to be shorter. I need a bigger pair of scissors. Hold on. That's pretty shabby. I really went off. Let me try to make it a little bit more straighter. Maybe. Paper trimmers do give a kind of a nicer look. then you can take the top and just snip it like this and then you take this piece you bring it over to this side let me hang on to it here and then you snip it again and then you have that middle piece right there and is my crop dial down here. I thought it was, but it might not be. <laughs> I get stuff everywhere. It's probably upstairs. I think it is. <laughs> oh well. So we're going to take this. I don't even have all my tools down here. I'm so bad. We're going to kind of punch a little hole. For now. I'll make this better later. <laughs> this is just to give you an example. So, I know what we could do to fix that. We could even do it less because you can do it without a crop -a -dial. So since this is a green journal, we're going to wing some stuff. I did not plan for this. <laughs> Um, I have some brads down here. 
So I'm going to take out this brad. I didn't even know these were brads, is what they were called. I know that's crazy, but I didn't. I just always called them pins. But brads are the ones that you put in, and then they have the prongs that spread out on the other side. And you can decorate this. any way you want it. I don't know if this will show up any. But sometimes when you cut in to paper, like the little bit of white shows. So I'm going to take this make sure it's green. You get a cute little tag with this page and it's got kind of a little gem in there. I don't know what is on that. I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't a spider web. We're in Spiderville, people. That's what I call down here. So there you go, another decoration. And pretty much I love that. This could even be a decoration on its own. Um, you can make little ATC cards to go in here like that same one I showed you we could make some to go in here like this so then that will be another decoration I'm not going to use that specific card because I want more green in it and then here I don't know why I keep forgetting to bring my thumb punch down here but you can cut like a little thing and you could add something inside. Well, it's going to have to be smaller. I'll have to make smaller cards to go in there. But you get to just make something smaller to stick out of here. Um... I like that lady with a bird on her shoulder. Sometimes I just don't like to take the images that's already in the book. Out. If we could take and put this right here. This dries so fast sometimes. There we go. Gotta take kind of take it off the top. And you do want to get as close to the edge as you can so that it doesn't stick up. there. 
dry for a few minutes or a couple minutes or a minute or however long. And two, it's important to pick out what you want your cover to look like. So I look at this book and I think, do I want to cover this part, leave it as is? Because you could put material or something right there and then cover this or you can just pick something that you want on the front that will fit just on the color so it gives you food for thought something like that I haven't picked my cover out yet Sometimes I can pick one out right away and sometimes it'll take me a little bit of time. So I'll have to think on that one and maybe look around and see what I can find that I do want to put on the front. in here what do I want to add let's see here maybe I'll just do the hat and you could even make this a tuck if you want to just stick a hat in here and then have just this, this part glued we can go around the bottom up the sides and you can turn this even into a little tuck pocket of something hanging out a small clover that's smaller than this one to decorate the hat all kinds of good things you can think of just got to use your imagination you know I think I want to put this cut just this beer mug off because I think it's cute. This is the part of journaling that I find very interesting and fun is when you've got to create the stuff to go in it. And it could be, to me, that's the part, the hardest is getting the pieces and then finding how you actually want to decorate something. To me, that's the most time-consuming part.
for myself. One thing I love about these is they're so small. This for your memory keepers. And even if you can't fit the big part in, you can snip pieces with the tip of it. Love these shears. It's like the possibilities are endless with these things. And this is another thing. You could add that to the tag itself. Or you could do what I'm doing and just stick it on the pocket. <laughs> like I said, possibilities are endless. And if you have glitter, glue, or anything like that, you can add it. Like, let's see here, what do I have? So you know how leprechauns are always looking for gold. I like squeeze it. Well, before I open it, I kind of like squeezing it up a little bit because you don't know. How it's going to come out of the tube. And then we're going to take this. We're going to come up here. Just a little you can buy glitter glue at Walmart. I don't know if I got this from the Dollar Tree or Walmart. Come down this side. And I'll just let that dry. That's it, guys. This just gives you kind of like an idea. And then I'll go through. I'm going to make some more items, you know, between my big shot and just things I cut out. And I'll bring them down and show you. And we'll decorate. That's all we got left to do with this journal. And I got to pick a front. And we'll go from there. But I'll let that dry overnight. Just so you get a gist of how to do a journal. And, it, and like I said, if you want pages, you can take this, just, just to show you. I lay this here. And I make a snip. I'll get my regular scissors. And we're going to cut up this page so it will take off the part that's ripped kind of because we can still use the scrap 
and I want to keep this part because it's the dark that goes into the light and then we're gonna see where this goes to cover the words and then I'm going to make a snip right here and I'm gonna cut up that side and see how it covers now you don't want to be too long you gotta watch where you put it because when you turn your page you don't want this to pull it up so I'm gonna cut another little piece off of this side this side here don't want you to think of doing any tricks out of your eye shot <laughs> cut just a tad bit more off to prevent that put these scissors away then I'm going to take this and I'm going to glue it down I just swirl You can use a glue stick too, it doesn't matter. And then what I do is I'm gonna lay it over the words. Make sure it's not too far in to where the book bends. Lay it here, and this is your writing spot. And that's all I did with this journal is just lay it over the words where if you want to put something in here or you can glue over top of this and kind of use this as a background. It's endless. Endless possibilities. I could even take, you can even take and make a mixed media art piece like this where you put your paint and all your stuff down and you can actually run this through the die cut machine I just showed you cut out tags of this and add it to this it's just crafting is amazing I love that I met the crafting community on YouTube because they do things I've never even heard of and it's just been an amazing journey for the love of crafts so anyways I'm going to put you to sleep. <laughs> and if you guys are creating a journal, like I said, put it in the description or in the group, I mean, and show what you're working on. Just put the cover of the book if you're working on a book. But it's a lot of fun to have somebody to craft along with. I don't edit. Not that I have a thing wrong with editing because sometimes it can be good if you're trying to learn something fast. But I don't edit so you can actually see the process I take. And there goes my timer. So with that, whatever time zone you're in, I hope you're having a great one. And I hope you're enjoying this. Let me know if you're enjoying crafting along with me or watching me craft to learn some new ideas. Let me know if you're not. <laughs> hey, anything goes in this group and on YouTube. So with that, whatever time zone you're in, I hope you're having a great one. And I hope you're enjoying this. And I'll see you soon. Bye.